Oh, cartography. The place where all the angsty art kids go to die. A crowd so thankless that caffeine-addicted hermits are lauded for the caffeine-high scribbles they call world-building. I mean, come on. What is this? How is this a good map? Why does the mountain range connect to a perfect night? Why is the land so squarish? How is the coastline Why? so inconsistent? By the geology? Why? Are you there just to mock me? It's safe to assume that very few people respect maps, and especially the makers behind them. Go figure. But, in truth, these individuals are pivotal to the way you perceive the world at large. And the way you perceive the world is everything. Today, I'm going to tell you about the most important person to shape your world, literally. Enjoy. Before we kick this off, remember to take a moment to hit that pretty little subscribe button and ding that bell. Go on. Ding it. In the spring of 1512, Hubert and Emma Ratcher de Cremor gave birth to their seventh child in Rupermond, Flanders, now Belgium. That child's name? Gert. Gert de Cremor. He would grow up on a very modest diet of mostly bread, ale, and hella Latin, because the 16th century was still a rocking baby. And he was really, really smart. So smart, in fact, that by the age of seven, he could speak and read Latin fluently. After his father's death, he attended the Brethren of the Common Life, a religious community in Herzegovina in the Netherlands, where he studied Catholic doctrines, dialectics, and Latin. Again. At this time, Gert de Kremer was about to reach his final form. If you know your German, specifically your Low German, you be aware that the name Kremer derives from the name Kramer, which roughly translates to merchant. If you know your Latin, specifically your classical Latin, you will be aware that you really need more friends. Gert, being a massive Latin stan, decided to select a new name, a Latin name, Gerardus Mercator, Mercator meaning merchant. Cool. With his packed suitcase and his new alter ego, Gerardus Mercator enrolled at the University of Louvain and graduated with a master's degree in philosophy and humanities. Instead of furthering his studies, however, the man would begin travelling, which fostered his deep interest in geography. He believed it was a subject that would best explain the structure of the world which God created. So, being the visionary he was meant to become, Mercator accidentally created the gap year before middle class boomers did in the 60s and returned to Louvain to study a little mathematics. Both mathematics and geography will later play its role in his legacy. I know what you're thinking. Math? What does that have to do with maps? Well, you know in math class when you asked your teacher when you was ever going to need this garbage? Turns out you were a drooling idiot then as you are now. Mathematics is that secret ingredient to everything great in life. In 1535, Gerardus Mercator constructed a terrestrial globe commissioned by Emperor Charles V of the Holy Roman Empire, which was a holy empire totally not in Rome. But it wasn't until 1537 when he produced his first map, a map of Palestine which Mercator knew better than any place outside of the Low Countries. He knew his histories well, since the land had been the subject matter of the first map that most of his generation had ever seen in the Bible. Mercator's map of Palestine was made of passion, which can't be said for many of the other maps during his time. His map of Flanders, for example, produced three years later, was commissioned solely for political purposes because maps have always sent important signals about the regions which are covered, what belongs to who, where countries' borders begin and end, and so on. Despite the intent behind them, 
Mercator's maps tended toward a degree of accuracy. His map of Flanders was one of the most accurate maps of the region at the time, but it was far from his crowning legacy. And, just a fun side note to show you how big his legacies would become, Gerardus Mercator was also the first to use the term Atlas to describe a collection of maps. And despite all of that, Mercator's longest lasting legacy isn't even a map. In 1564, Mercator was appointed as court cosmographer, where he began to perfect a new map projection. It used a degree of mathematic calculation to work. The Mercator projection, which would bear his name, was first used by Mercator in 1569 for a war map, but would have far and wide-reaching consequences. So far and wide-reaching, in all likelihood, it's what shapes how you see the world today. And that, that is where our video actually begins. If I were to ask you to close your eyes and imagine the world, in all likelihood, you'd imagine this. This is the Mercator map, or rather a map of the world using a Mercator projection. It's a neat map which rose to prominence because it was an excellent tool for navigating the seas with its preserved angles and stayed in prominence because human beings don't really like things which challenge the status quo. Ask Martin Luther. Both of them. At this point, the Mercator map is so natural to you that if I showed you something like this, you may feel a little weird inside. Okay. Get it off the screen. No, 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 get, get it off. The Mercator map was revolutionary. You could draw a straight line on this map and that line represented a constant course in real life. So you may be assuming this map is crazy accurate. Well, not really. Firstly, no map is 100% accurate. It's remarkably difficult to transfer the globe onto a two-dimensional rectangular shaped sheet without distortion because the world is a sphere. Yes, you heard it here first. Secondly, the Mercator projection distorts a map the closer it is to the poles, which makes countries bigger at the top and bottom and smaller the closer it is to the equator. For example, if you are paying close attention in geography, you may know that Greenland, home of fish, ice, and maybe people, might be the largest island by area, but is still massively inadequate compared to the world's smallest continent, which is, it's Australia. It's Australia, let's, let's not embarrass ourselves. You'd be forgiven for thinking otherwise judging with a Mercator map. Thirdly, where a cartographer would usually attempt to fix one kind of distortion at the expense of increasing another, the Mercator map is one of those rare beauties which fixes its distortion with an equal sprinkling of another distortion, specifically latitudinal distortion and longitudinal distortion. Basically, it's all a bit off. That may explain why most people don't know that Paris is further north than Montreal, Barcelona is the same latitude as Chicago, and Venice lines up squarely with Portland. Yes, Venice of Italy and Portland of Oregon. And yes, a little part of me died too. Our worldview is shaped by our perception of where we are and how things got that way. Geography and history. Those two subjects shape your understanding of so much. Having a poor map from the get is like finding out that the entire history of the world was created 4089 days ago by a god egg with too much time on its hands and a dark sense of humour. Cartographers have known the downsides to the Mercator map for decades and all sorts of theories as to why it is still in widespread use exist to this day. In the current political climate, you can guess the prevailing theory. 
So let's address the elephant in the room. Is the Mercator map a racist? No. No, it's not. But I don't doubt that it's enabled and even encouraged plenty of bias and xenophobia throughout history. The simple truth is, people are people and can't get their act together. Look, I'll prove it. Pepsi or Coca-Cola? No. No. There was one. There was one right answer to that. I can't believe you even thought of that. You should be ashamed of yourself. Disgusting. Oh. Fine. The map isn't very accurate. But it's inconsequential, really. If no map is 100% accurate, then it doesn't really matter. Well, hold on, my cynical friend. Actually, there's a map. No, no. It isn't this monstrosity. Get it. Oh my god, get it off. Get it off. It's this. This beautiful masterpiece is the orthograph, created by Hajime Narakawa in 1999, which is so perfect in proportions that it can be folded into a sphere. Granted, it's not all neatly flat and straight angled like Mercator's, but it's the most accurate map in terms of relative land size and position. It's actually quite impressive how Narakawa achieved this. I'll drop a link in the description below. I would highly recommend checking out the orthograph map for a better understanding of how the world really looks. A map is one of those important things you will look at regularly and not question its validity. And that's how it should be. But sadly, doing that with an imperfect map is the route to all kinds of misconceptions we hold today. If you're still indifferent and thinking, who cares? It's just a map. And it serves a purpose. Then you have to ask yourself, when was the last time you had to travel the seas using only a map, a pencil, and a ruler? Can you even sail, bro? Then what purpose sets it as the default? Because if geography is based on the principle of teaching the world around you, as objectively as possible, then the Mercator map is not the map to do so. Hello again, it's me, Drop. Thanks for tuning in. It's been a while, but I'm back. If you like this type of content, subscribe and press that bell button. If you just like watching videos made by an egg with too much time on its hands, like and comment down below. Until next time, drop.